This is me taking a risk. 140. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Everyone who's watched the Pawn Shop TV reality show knows two things for sure about Chum Lee. First, he's not that intelligent. Second, people still love him though. The reason why Chum Lee is so loved by the fans is probably due to his reckless and seemingly foolish deals. However, some of his idiotic deals have turned out to be jackpots, and today we're going to talk about some of the biggest jackpots he ever made. Number 7. Samurai Swords Whenever humans will talk about their past, swords would be the inherent part of the discussion. They're a part of history and represent a time when things were simple for humans, survival of the fittest. Therefore, ancient swords are given certain respect and are considered antique pieces worth millions. Owning a true ancient antique sword is very rare, and many of you might never see one in your whole lifetime. Many people keep swords at their home as a souvenir, but they're often fake. Gold and Silver Pawn Shop was aware of this fact when a customer came in with a pair of two swords. They looked at the swords with quiet suspicion, but then came in Chum Lee. He was so impressed by the swords, he paid $4,000 on the pair, which is a lot of money to spend on swords that you don't know if they're real. Fine, Corey, I paid under five grand for these. Experts were called in to examine the swords, and when the Harrisons found out about the deal, they were not a least bit happy about it. Even Corey was not convinced that those artifacts were real. I don't know enough to buy them without calling somebody. You just bought those? Yes, I did. They went to a local expert to get clarification about the swords, and there came a twist of fate. The expert revealed that they not only were real and ancient, but one of them even dated to have been made in the 1400s. And while one of the swords had some fake branding, the rest was real and was worth some good money. Experts revealed that the swords were worth not less than $13,000. Even with $4,000, he still profited $9,000, but Rick was not happy at all. He was mad at Chum Lee for his careless handling of the deal that involved so much risk. I'm not gonna congratulate you. It does take skill to win at a slot machine. Number six, historical potato. This entry might appear insane to you as it appeared to me, but what can be done? A man came into the shop to sell a potato, and the price he asked was unbelievable. He wanted a hundred thousand dollars for the potato. Well, I take a hundred thousand for God, man. Seriously. Well, the story begins when Chum Lee met a guy named Sean who came into the gold and silver pawn shop as a man on a mission to sell a potato. He told Chum Lee that the aforementioned potato was worth $100,000 because it's the potato that was thrown and hit Martin Luther King Jr. King is arguably the most important person in the civil rights movement, so when that man claimed it about the potato, Chum Lee was intrigued. Chum Lee thought at that point that if the potato had seriously hit the king, then it really was worth something, but there was no documentation proof of it. Despite that, Chum Lee convinced the man to sell the potato with a unique backstory for $225. It was proof that the potato was fake because no man on earth would ever have sold a genuine article of history like that. The drop in price from $100,000 to $225 was enough to convince Chum Lee that it was a fake story. I ended up giving him two bucks for it. I mean, it's a potato. Number five, white swords. Do you know why Chum Lee has such a bad reputation in the shop? because he always finds a way to mess up with a job that has clear-cut guidelines. This entry is about one such mess. Over two years ago, Rick found a samurai sword and sent it to Japan to fully restore it. When the sword came back from Japan, Rick decided to keep it in the shop as a souvenir for the visitors to see. Rick specifically mentioned it to everyone that the sword is not for sale. I think I did all right, but it's not for sale. I'm just putting it in the case, so. But guess what? Chum Lee managed to sell it to Dana White, the name might sound familiar to you because he's the owner of the UFC, one of the most popular combat sports on the planet. Dana wanted to buy a classic sword, and Chum Lee immediately showed him the sword he was so strictly instructed not to sell. Not for sale. Pretty self-explanatory. Although the sword was worth around $35,000, Dana bought it for $30,000. But he got Dana to purchase another $30,000 worth of swords, thus increasing the profits made, so overall he did well. It was good business, but I think Rick was still lamenting the loss of that sword. Why is my sword out here? Your sword. I sold it. Number 4. Spotting Fake 61 Willie Mays Uniform 
In all the previous entries, Chumley made business, but in this category, he tried his best to avoid a loss. He in fact made a very strong and interesting observation during a deal when a pair of customers came in while Corey and Chumley were on watch, and they claimed to have a Willie Mays jersey. Mays is a Hall of Famer in the MLB, and to have his uniform in the shop would have been great. Corey therefore was very eager to buy it, but Chum Lee was hesitant. He felt that something was seriously wrong about this deal. Specifically, he noted that the jersey might have been worn by Mays in theory, but not in a match. Seller, however, claimed that the uniform was game worn. Chum Lee noticed that it was far too clean to have been game worn. It did not have any dirt on it, and Mays was known for stealing bases. Not to mention he was an outfielder, so getting in the dirt was the most expected scenario. Badass, he was sliding around in the dirt and the grass. I imagine there would be a bunch of stains on it. Maybe in a game, he didn't go into the dirt, but why were they coming in this late with the uniform? Corey didn't listen to Chumley and spent $31,000 on the jersey that turned out to be a mistake, because not only was the jersey not worth that much, it was later confirmed that Mays had never won this jersey at all. It was a loss of tens of thousands of dollars on the deal. Number 3. Tupac's BMW Dealing with cars in the business in the reality show requires three main things – highest possible level of quality, rarity, and worth buying and selling. Chum Lee, however, happened to find a car owned by the legendary and infamous rapper known simply as Tupac Shakur. He was a legend at the rap game and had a big role in refining rap over the years. Theoretically, therefore, anything Tupac owned is very valuable today. The car Chum Lee found was particularly special not because it was a very high class or rare car, but because this was the same car that Tupac was in when the drive-by shooting happened that would eventually claim his life. It had been restored a bit after the accident, but the owners had proof that this was indeed Tupac's car. Chum Lee noted that the car could be worth almost a million dollars, which would be a good deal for the Pawn Stars if a reasonable price was made. But the owners wanted much more than Rick was willing to offer. This car half a million to a million bucks. The deal went off, but Rick was very impressed by Chum Lee for trying to make a deal with this much potential. Number 2. Stan Ding in Line Comic books are tricky because in terms of value, this is value depends on the series, edition, authors, art, and rarity. In the show, Chum Lee has made some bad decisions when it comes to dealing with comic book purchases, but this entry is about the time when he got a gold star in an unexpected manner. A customer came into the shop who wanted to give out an enlarged comic book panel for promotional reasons. Little did he know that the comics were signed by two comic legend artists, John Romita and the one and only Stan Lee. The fans of both legends could give away their assets for the copy of comics signed by them, but here Chum Lee outsmarts everyone. Normally, having Stan Lee's signature would be enough for anyone to make a deal. Many of them don't care even if it's real or not. But Chum Lee knew that Stan was in town those days, and he took his customer to meet Stan and John. Both of them went nostalgic. Stan remembered signing those comics along with John. That's my signature. So that is your signature, huh? Oh, no doubt about it. Everything was crystal clear then. Chum Lee bought those items for $5,000, which was such a cheap price to pay given the copies were signed by legends of comics. Now, all those who bought those comics from that show have an item probably greater in price now, given the fact that Stan has died. You know, even if I buy this from you, I still have to get it authenticated. Number 1. The Chum Lee Brand As I said, it doesn't matter what kind of stupid deal Chum Lee makes or how much Harrisons are upset with him. Fans love Chum Lee for being him. Chum Lee is one of the biggest stars of the show and when he realized this and saw his potential, his inner businessman woke up. He made a novelty store, one that sold items featuring himself and other pawn store members and various other things. Ok, so now, here we might think that such an absurd and vague idea of business will be a big flop, over that it was being operated by Chum Lee, but to your and my astonishment, the idea was a big success. Such a huge success, he started making a ton of cash, and he even wore some of his merchandise on Pawn Stars. He's the only Pawn Star to do this for a long time, but Chum Lee actually got tired of being the guy running it, so he sold partial ownership to Rick Harrison, and Rick was all brains. He ran the shop even better than Chum Lee. So while not wholly bright or a great businessman in the long term, there's no denying he did his part really well. Thank you for watching the video.